In this section, we will talk about confidence intervals, but to estimate a population proportion, unlike in the previous sections when we estimated a population mean. So uh, by now, we know that the confidence interval is um, the, the statistic plus or minus margin of error. In this case, our statistics will be p hat, or the sample proportion. The margin of error will be given by the square root of p hat q hat over n, where q hat is equal to 1 minus p hat. OK, the confidence interval to estimate p, where p is the population proportion, is p hat, where uh, p hat is a sample proportion, plus or minus z star, which is a critical value, uh, times the square root of p hat q hat over n, which is a standard deviation of the sample. So p hat is equal to x over n, where x is the number of successes, n is a sample size, and that is our best point estimate. In other words, uh, p hat, or the uh, sample proportion, is the best estimate for the population proportion. Z star is a critical value that depends on our confidence level, and square root of p hat q hat over n is a standard deviation of p hat, sometimes called the standard error of p hat. So once again, to make sure we're clear, p hat is the sample proportion, which is the number of successes divided by the sample size. Requirements, um, the sample must be taken independently, or uh, the sample size must be less than 5% of the population, it must be random, sample must be simple random sample, uh, to be unbiased, it has to be large enough. So here's another requirement. We need at least 10 successes and 10 failures to have a nearly normal shape. So n times p has to be greater than or equal to 10, and n times q also has to be greater than or equal to 10. Remember, n equals to the sample size, um, and p is the number of successes divided by the sample size. And q is just 1 minus p. Here's an example. Suppose that a, res a market research firm is hired to estimate the percent of adults living in a large city who have cell phones. 500 randomly selected adults, uh, adult residents in the city are surveyed. So we already know that our sample size n, this is equal to 500. Of the 500 people, 421 responded yes. So 421, this is the number of successes because we want to figure out how many people have um, how many adults have a cell phone? So four, 421 adults have a cell phone. That means that's a number of successes. Okay, so our p hat would be 421, the number of successes, divided by uh, the total sample size, 421 divided by 500, which is going to be 0.842. So if p hat is 0.842, then q hat is... 1 minus 0.842, which is 0.158. And our sample size n, we already said, is 500. So uh, we need to construct a 95% confidence level. Recall that the three most common confidence levels are 90%, 95%, and 99%. And here are the critical values for those. For 90%, the critical value is 1.645. For 95%, uh, it's 1.96. And for 99%, it's 1. Point, uh, or 2.575. Okay, so keep these in mind because we will be using these over and over again. For proportions, we always use um, normal distribution. Okay, so let's plug this in. Our formula is as follows. It's p hat plus or minus our critical value times the square root of p hat q hat all over n. So um, our p hat is 0.842. Then we got plus or minus our critical value. Our critical value is for a 95% confidence level, which is 1.96. And we're going to multiply that by 
the square root of p hat, which is 0.842 times q hat, which is 0.158 divided by the sample size n, which is 500. So carefully put this in a calculator and we will get 0.842 plus or minus, if you multiply 1.96 times this whole square root, uh, this will give you 0 0.03. And um, I think uh, in, uh, in Lumen, you only need two decimals. So we can just go with 0 0.84 uh, plus or minus 0 0.03. So our confidence interval would be uh, 0 0.84 plus 0 0.03, 0 0.84 minus 0 0.03. So this will be 0 0.81. That's 0 0.84 minus 0 0.03, comma 0 0.87, which is 0 0.84 plus 0 0.03. This is our confidence interval. And this is this represents a 95% confidence level. So this tells us that we are 95% confidence that the interval 0 0.81 to 0.87 contains the true proportion of adult residents who have cell phones. That means between 81% and 87% of adult residents have cell phones, and we can say that with 95% confidence. Okay, so we can say that between 81% and 87% uh, of adult residents have cell phones. And we can say this with a 95% confidence level. Here's another example. For a class project, a political science student at a large university wants to estimate the percent of students who are registered voters. He surveys 500 students and finds that 300 are registered voters. So what do we know? We know that the sample size is 500 because uh, 500 students were surveyed. Of the 500, 300 are registered voters. That's the number of successes because we're looking for how many uh, people are registered voters. So P hat will be 300 over 500 or 0.6, okay, that'll be our p hat. Our q hat is one minus 0.6 or 0.4. So our formula is uh, p hat plus or minus our critical value times the square root of p hat q hat all over n. So what's our p hat? p hat is 0.6. What's our critical value? Well, our critical value, we're looking for 90% confidence interval. So our critical value is going to be 1.645, or we can round this to two decimals to 1.65. So plus or minus 1.65 times square root of p hat, which is 0.6, times q hat, which is 0.4, um, divided by n, which is 500. Okay, so uh, so this gives us 0.6 plus or minus. If you multiply uh, 1.65 times the square root of um, 0.6 times 0.4 divided by 500, this will give you 0 0.04. So um, our confidence interval will be 0 0.06 minus 0 0.04, which is going to be 0 0.56, and then 0 0.6 plus 0 0.04, which will be 0.64. So we are 90% confidence, because we have 90% confidence level, uh, that the interval 0 0.56 to 0 0.64 contains a true proportion of students who are registered voters. In other words, somewhere between 56% and 64% of all students are registered voters. And we can say this with a 90% confidence level. Okay, the next example. Um, a local poll samples 500 likely voters and finds that 70% support Proposition Q on the next ballot, what is the margin of error? So in this case, we want to find margin of error. Uh, we will do this example in class. Now, given a confidence level, we can, uh, oh, sorry, given a confidence interval, we can calculate the point estimate and the margin of error 
using the following formulas. Our point estimate p hat is the um, the upper value of the confidence interval plus lower value divided by two. The margin of error is upper minus lower divided by two. For example, a school surveys a group of students and estimates that somewhere between 58% and 64% of students want to have more food options on campus. What was the point estimate? p hat. Well, p hat, according to this formula, is the upper plus lower values of the confidence interval. So it'll be 0.64 plus 0.58 divided by 2. So p hat is equal to 0.61. Then we go on the margin of error. The margin of error is going to be the upper, which is um, 0.64 minus lower, which is 0.58 divided by 2. So in this case, the margin of error uh, will, is going to be 0 0.03. So if you were to write this um, using the plus or minus notation, it'll be 0 0.61 plus or minus 0 0.03, which is p hat plus or minus the margin of error. Okay, the second example we will go over um, in class. Lastly, uh, to calculate the sample size necessary to estimate the population proportion with a certain margin of error e, so we want to have um, we want to um, get a sample that's big enough in order to give us a particular margin of error, and this is the formula we would use. We know what the critical value is. We know what p and q are. Uh, e is the margin of error that we desire, and this would be the formula. N must be a whole number. If n is not a whole number, always round up to the nearest whole number in order to be on the safe side. Because we don't want to have a sample size that's too small, we always want to go with a, a bigger sample size. So we can make sure that um, it has this margin of error. If no information about uh, p is no, uh, given, then we use p equals 0.5 and q equals 0.5 as estimators. This will uh, op uh, happen uh, more often than not. Often we're not, I mean, how would we know the, the population proportion um, if that's what we're trying to find? So we use 0 0.5 and Q, uh, P equals 0 0.5 and Q equals 0 0.5 as uh, estimates. So um, suppose a mobile company wants to determine the current percentage of, of consumers ages 50 plus who use text messages uh, on their cell phones. So how many uh, people over 50 use texting? How many customers age 50 plus should the company survey in order to be 90% confident? So this is a key piece of information that the estimated um, sample proportion is within three percentage points. So it's when it says within three percentage points, that's your margin of error. So the margin of error is within three percentage points. That means it's going to be plus or minus 3% or in decimal form, it'll be plus or minus 0 0.03. That's your margin of error of the true population proportion of consumers age 50 who use text messaging. So let's look at the formula. The formula is n greater than or equal to z star, that's a critical value, times square root of pq divided by e, and all of that is going to be squared. So because we have a 90% confidence level, remember the z score for 90% confidence is 1.645, or we can use 1.65 um, to round to decimals. So we have n greater than or equal to the critical value for 90%, which is 1.65, times square root of p times q. So what's p? We don't know anything about p and q, so we're going to use uh, 0.5 as an estimator. So it'll be 0.5 times 0.5 divided by the margin of error e, which is 0 0.03, and that whole thing is going to be squared. So if you put this in a calculator very carefully, we will get that n is greater than or equal to 756.25. Um, and make sure that you guys always round up in order to be on the safe side. So even though uh, using our traditional rules, we would round down in order to get um, the safe sample size, this would be 757 people must be sampled.